All right. I so like to <laughs> today we're going to start covering dimensions. Um, so as you saw here, the the goal of making most of our views is so we can't dimension them, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Doing sections, we do sections so we can dimension. We don't do auxiliary views so we can dimension. We do the regular three act views so we can dimension. That's the most important part of it. <clears throat> so. The drawing provides what? What does the drawing give us? Gives you a physical description of the of an object. Of what part of the object? Uh, what can you tell from a drawing with no dimensions? Uh, shape. Shape, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I don't have it. That gives us the shape, right? The drawing gives us a shape. What do the dimensions provide? Numbers. Technical and what's measurement. more precise than measurement? Size, size. right? Measurement. Size. So size. Yeah. They're all kind of there. I was looking for size. Um, so you have to have both. You can have the greatest drawing of it. It could be exactly right, graphically, but if your dimensions aren't there, or you don't have any dimensions, or you're missing dimensions, it's worthless. Mm-hmm. If you remember the standard, the, the part of the standards that cover a shape is like that big. The part that covers dimensions is like that big. This is what's important. My general, general rule of thumb is I allot one, either, either equal to double amount of time for dimensioning than I do for drawing. If I think it's going to take half an hour to draw, it's going to take half an hour to an hour to dimension. That's my general rule of thumb. Really? Mm-hmm. Because this needs to be really good. Because this is what they go by. They're not going to measure the drawing. They're going to look at the dimensions and <coughs> go by that. If your dimensions aren't good, if they're not standard, People get lost. then it's going to be junk. They're going to make it wrong. They're going to have questions. They're just going to decide on how to do this stuff. You're going to sue them. And they're going to say, nope, your, your, your dimensions aren't good. All is out the door. So. Charge double. You need to, to make sure that your dimensions are good. So we want to give all the dimensions necessary to make the part. So of course we want to dimension everything that we can. Um, but we don't want to give duplicate dimensions. So we want to give all of them, but not not the same one twice. And that doesn't even remember mean the same number twice. But if we have a piece, like that, <coughs> that gets very annoying. Is that all the bits I need for the height of that? Yeah, it's more than I need, right? Yeah. I have duplicate dimensions. Yeah. Even though I don't have the same number twice, that is over-dimensioned. Why is it over-dimensioned? I only need one half, not two halves. All you need is the right pair. I only need two of those, right? Yeah. yeah. If I have this and I have that, this is whatever is left over, right? Yeah. yeah. If I have these two, that's whatever it adds up to. Yeah. So I don't want all three. You want to make sure that there's something that can change. Because otherwise, this thing, they can't use the tolerance on it. It's not going to work. So they don't know what's important. So that's how you decide is what, what dimension to keep depends on what's important to the part. If something's going to, if this has to fit into another groove or something, or that corner this, right this one you probably want, and then depending on if this overall height or if there's something else between here and here that it needs to fit, would tell you whether or not to keep this one or this one. If what matters is overall height, mm -hmm. And something that's going to fit into this area, this would be important, and that one wouldn't be. And so, unless you know the overall context of the whole assembly, you just kind of have to guess. So that's the hardest part about doing classwork parts, is that you don't know the context. So you don't know which ones are the right ones. So you just kind of have to make a guess. Okay. Questions. <coughs> No 
<clears throat> so another trying to speed down the scale. If the dimension, if there's a dimension that's not to scale, we underline. So why might we do this? Why might we have a dimension that's not to scale? No, reference is different. Not to scale. That doesn't happen as much anymore. Uh, I've seen oh, it in change, architectural if stuff. If you change a measurement? Yeah, if you change it and you don't want to redo the drawing. So like red lines, a lot of times, like a shop red line, they'll go over it. And sometimes they'll make it look just like it was printed still. But then you need to underline it so you know that that one's not the actual measurement. Yeah, um, if they like short a whole part overall or something, yeah. just change all the dimensions. Yeah, or if they, they change something to make it look better on the paste paper without using break lines, they need to put it. Stuff like that. When's an example of that? They don't use that no more, you um, A good example, it used to be done a lot of when you did it by hand. Because instead of doing, redoing a whole drawing, because you change a bunch of dimensions, you just change the number and underline it. Oh, okay, so that's the <clears throat> But now, it's easy just to stretch it and reprint it. So it's not as much, but if you had, let's say, your paper is that big, and you had an arc here, and the center of the arc is way down here, and so we can do, so let's say that's the part, I can do a jogged radius to that. That's telling me that that center isn't the real center of this part. And so now I can put the dimension in, so I'll put it in, and I'll underline it. Because that's not the real dimension that I'm seeing. So that's not part of it. But do the same thing there, put X and underline it. Just so I can get it on the paper, but that's not really where it is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're just you're just basically isolating that part, but you, that's not the exact. Yeah. Location. So we don't want to make the part smaller, just so we can see a center point way down here. Yeah. So we're just we're doing a jog dimension, so we can put the dimension the center up here, and then we're dimensioning it. But for that particular part, for not the actual part. Yeah. Because the dimension there, yeah, the number is the real number, but yeah, the so measurement the isn't. isn't the right measurement. Yeah, the location is what important. Is yeah. important not the, the drawing. Yeah, and this is what happens when you override the dimension. Also, remember. When you put that dimension, it's automatically going to put what it measures. If you override it, you're right. probably going to be underlining. Why wouldn't you use it as a, uh, like something like that? Say that what you're really concerned with that, but you wanted to show this up here, like a reference drawing, like you were saying, and you didn't care about the dimensions. You were no, this show one you do care about the dimension. Shit. This one you do care about the dimension, though. We do care what that dimension is there. We just don't want to make this real small to be able to fit it at, at the scale on the paper, because otherwise, <clears throat> otherwise that might be tiny. Depending on the size of that radius. Like that. <laughs> or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so let's get it bigger on the page. Yeah, so that's why the scale is not necessary, but the dimensions are yeah, yeah. yeah. That one, that one, we're overriding yeah. the distance. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to make, if you do that, you have to know what that distance is. You really have to measure it and know what it is before you put it in. Okay, because when you just do the dimension command on it, it's going to give you the wrong number. It's going to give you the actual number of measures. Now, when you're doing it like that, the, the center point is going to be right there, but that's not the actual case. So, do you have to put something else there to no. designate? No, no, that's, what, that, that's what, what this is for. Okay. But when you dimension it, you're going to put in the dimension to that's, the real center. That's why the lines are crooked. It's like it squashed it up. Yep. Okay, so that's where we're going to put the actual location of that of that mm -hmm. piece, yep. while the other dimensions are around for that part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, remember in 4A, you did a part <laughs> kind of like this. You did the yeah. jog dimension. Mm -hmm. No. Well, oh, everyone else. I didn't look at my email because I got them all still. <laughs> <laughs> so when we're doing dimension, we have. Okay. So we have technique. So we have how we draw dimensions, which AutoCAD takes care of the lines and the arrowheads for us. Mm -hmm. But we still have space and then we need to worry about. How do we space our dimensions out? We have the placement. So where do we put dimensions? Either where do we put them on a view or which view do we put them on? And then the choice. So, if, which ones do we use? 
So depends on who it's going to. Mm -hmm. So usually we want to dimension it so the person inspecting it can inspect it well. And then we'll refine it. So if we're dimensioning it, and then it can go two different places, and they can check it both places just as easy. We'll refine it so it makes it easier for the guy making it. Don't tell you what yeah. um, why, why would you differentiate? Why? Because, like, if you had. Isn't that like a universal language? What is the easiest way to measure where that hole is? Uh, from the edge, right? Yeah. But is that the good way to make the hole? No. 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 You, want center. you want to make it from the center. Because those machinists is going to line up on the center. Oh, so, okay. this is what you'd want it. Yeah, that might be easier for the guy checking it, but the guy checking it has other equipment that he could find where the center is. <clears throat> and so it's yeah, better to mention to the center to help the machine. So you pay, make one for the machinist and one no. for the No, no, one drawing. The the we only get one drawing. The inspector made drawings before, so he knows what needs to be on there and what doesn't. So he just corrects or it takes away all your extra dimensions, basically. No, uh, no, there's, it's all the same yeah. drawing, the same thing. It's just, we're just moving it over. Means, these two mean the same thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. But this one is easier to make it from. So, so, so this is what we want to go the by. The inspector tells you how to clear how to make your No, the inspector, clear. he has tools uh -huh. that'll tell him that he'll be able to find where that center is. And so even though it's a little bit harder to measure, he can still measure that. The machinist is it's really hard to drill a hole from the side of it. <laughs> and so it kind of it, it makes it easier for the machinist. Um, we can also if we go back here. <laughs> Let's say we decide to keep, <coughs> we want to keep one. these two, right? Keep those two. And so we can do that and get rid of this one, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's say <coughs> this one is going to be something that's really easy. Like maybe this is a more complicated part. This part, it's really easy. But maybe it's the more comfy part where it's really easy. Machinists can't measure this distance because maybe this is way, this is real big. They can't get into this area. Mm -hmm. But they can measure how far, deep, how far deep this is. And so we want to be able to, to let the machinist get this. So now we do a reference dimension. Because they might not be able to cut that into part. Yeah. Itself. So this is telling them, here's this number so you don't have to try and add it up to figure out what it is. But don't check this number. This is just kind of for your information to make your job a little easier. I still really care about this number and that number. So they might be able to, to use the, the depth indicator on, on the mill to, to measure that down. Well, they inspect it. They're going to inspect that and that. So they might take that minus that to give us this dimension because this is what we care about, even if they can't directly measure it. Okay. But, but, <clears throat> so that's where you have to kind of think. If it's going to make it easier, so the machine doesn't have to do some math, or this one's pretty easy, just a minus. But if you had four or five things end to end, you were measuring different sections of it. Doing an overall dimension kind of helps, so you know what the overall length of the piece of stock you're supposed to get is, and stuff like that. So, questions? Um, so our lines. You want it at least three eighths, closer to half an inch, if you can, from the first, from your object to the first dimension line. So, yeah, there is. so the dimension line, long pin. Dimension lines are these lines here. The line that has the text and arrows on it, that's the dimension line. <clears throat> so dimension line about three eighths or half an inch from the object to the first one. You want to be consistent around the whole part. If you decide on this part you're going to use three eighths, make all of them three eighths. <clears throat> and then for the next spacing, you decide it's going to be a quarter. Or if you have the space, make it three eighths there also. And then that, do that everywhere. What's an easy way we can? Control that space and automatically in AutoCAD. Continue baseline dimensions, right? So continue dimensions gives us that. Baseline gives us that. 
So in our dimension style, we, can, we have a preset. baseline already said three eighths, which is good. So that's what I do whenever I'm doing this. I just leave that at three eighths. It's better to have a wider, farther part. Why do you think that is? Easier to read. <clears throat> yeah, it's easier to read. You're not trying to get up all these lines right next to each other. You do it. Space like, them out a little bit, they're easier to read. You do it like the, on a Word document, double space so people can make notes also? No. No? Just no, easier just, to read. It's just easier to follow. Because they're not supposed to be writing on the drawing, unless they're yeah. doing changes that you approve. Once you do a drawing, you get to the shop, they're not supposed to touch it. If they do, they're supposed to get back to you, and you're supposed to decide whether or not the change is good. If it is, you make a new drawing. If not, you tell them to make it the way you did it. Put them in their place. Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have the extension lines. These are the lines that come from the part up to the dimension line. You can see it has <clears throat> a little bit at the end. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. About an eighth of an inch. We have about a um, tiny gap. <clears throat> about sixty-fourth of an inch <clears throat> at the bottom. So always you have the gap here. With AutoCAD. When you click on the point, it's going to give you the, the space. You need water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor. That's what I mean. The doctor. So, uh, Dr. Pepper, the doctor away. <clears throat> That's there. So does it automatically um, give you a promotion? <clears throat> if you have a big arc, <throat> arc, what are you going to have to do? You've got a, like a two-inch arc. Two-inch radius arc. You're commissioning to the outside of. You mentioned the outside of. A little promo for Dr. Pepper. Yeah, we just YouTube. promoted Dr. Pepper on your video. Put that on YouTube. Yeah, I'm gonna get a DMCA thing on that too. Um, so here I've got a. Oh, that was it. It's a right. 22 motor. So. If I dimension this, let's say I do that overall length, see there's no space, or there is, but it's so close that it kind of disappears. What should I do? What are you trying to measure? Bring it, Bring it up some. Just going to figure out that dimension. <coughs> Bring it up some. Now I can see a little gap there. Yeah. How about it's putting magic. an extension line on the bottom? What? Oh, that's not What? What? Do you I don't need anything else on the bottom? Oh, right I need there? a ton more. But I'm talking about right here. That's all I care about right now is this. Okay. Yeah, but you can just... I want there to be a visible gap right there. So sometimes I have to pull it up some just so I can get a gap there. Because I don't want. My, my dimension line to run right into my object line. And this, you don't want to go in and set that so it automatically does that because it'll change all of them. Is that just so if a I go in and change one? the setting in here, it'll change that one too. Oh. And you don't want that. You just and this one's perfect. Right. So I just want to move it up so I can see a change. Yeah. And the reason we do that is because when you come down the extension line, you get to the gap, and you know the next thing after the gap is what you're dimensioning. So if there's no gap, you can get kind of confused on what it is that you're doing. That also means you don't add other gaps other places. Even though some people do, and even add anything in AutoCAD to be able to do that automatically, uh, to make gaps around. Like if you see a, some people's drawings, they'll do stuff like, like 
dimensional from both legs. Can you see where that gets confusing? Yeah, because what did you do? Because you come down, see a gap, and you're like, oh, oh, there's nothing there to dimension. Same thing here. And these are real simple parts. Think of, think how it'd be if you were on that. I still don't know what their dimension is. Not today. There's a lot of dark parts. So, <clears throat> the next thing is, we wanted to put our dimensions outside the part if possible. So the part, if you made a box out of it, that would be called a part envelope. We want to keep outside of that. Also, extension lines should not cross dimension lines. So which one of these is really bad? Really bad? Which one is the worst of these? The second and the last one. The fourth one. The second one. Yeah, both. This one and that one are both really bad, right? Mm -hmm. That one's horrible. You can't see anything on it, right? Because the dimensions are on the part. You see, it's hard to see what's the part, what's the dimension. This one. We like crossing this. And the one in the back. Because you can tell that other dimension from the bottom. Oh. What? No, you're yeah. talking about the first. Yeah, the right there. The, this extension line is crossing that dimension line. So we don't want that. So it makes it, wrong. It's, 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 it makes it easier to follow, or makes it harder to follow. So yeah. now these two. Which one is the right one? Uh, I would say three. Okay. C. I, I changed it up on you guys. Which one's the right one? The right one? The correct one. One. Which C. one is the one that we want to keep? Three. C. C. That one. I come up, I hit a gap. Oh, big is there oh. anything that are dimension? C. Yeah. Extension lines can cross into the part, they can the envelope. A. We want the dimension lines to be outside. I really meant A. Uh, so this is the good one. Yeah, extension good lines one? can come in. Because the extension lines have to come in to, to point to stuff, right? Yeah. Extension lines, extension lines can cross each other, no problem. They can't cross the dimension line. Oh. But that box looks funky. Yeah. Well, that's why we have the gaps, and these are thin lines. If these are thick lines, you get really confused. But since they're thin lines, you have the gaps. Your part has gaps all the way around. See that? No. That kind of sets it apart. So we already kind of talked about this one a little bit. So we already said this one's right, right? Sure. Yeah. So we, we don't want that. We don't want those gaps. Now what about those two? Which one is better? The first one. The second one. First one, second one. Right. What's better about the first one? All it's all lined up and everything clean, right. Outside. All my dimensions are right here in a nice line. We've got Next row up, we've got another line. Three different spaces. This one, I've got dement parts down in the envelope. Using the line. Using Remember my envelope? As if, I, if the part was square. Oh, yeah. I've got dimensions down in the envelope. And I've got one down here, one there, one there. They're all over the place. Yeah. We want to make it easy to read so you're not having to go all over. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sometimes when you have small spaces, you have to kick your arrows to the outside. Rodicat will do this for you. And then you have to move your text outside. Do some leaders. Do this where now you're sharing this arrowhead between this dimension and that dimension. Sometimes you'll also see that in that case, can you, use one of them all? you can just yeah. use the three lines, right? That's a little confusing. Can you just like make it to the point like you did on that other drawing, the the one the lab, where you have the all three lines and you just have both the dimensions going to be like that line. But <clears throat> I could have it where it's. I'm bad at dimensions. Yeah, I suck at it. I think dimension is easy. The simple ones are not big deal. The more complex ones. I can have it like that also, right? Yeah. Okay. And usually in this case, what I'll do is I'll put a dot right there. Why? Because. Yep. Because, because that's the midpoint. Because that helps 
to break it off. That, that's that one and that one. Sometimes you might also see it where it's Dimension there, and then that dimension there. See that the half with all overall dimension is That actually looks cleaner to me than that other thing. It, but it also depends on what's important. Yeah. Well, that three is the, the same thing the last one did. Yeah. The whole thing. That means that it's from here, this line to this line is three. And that line to that line is 1.5. Before it was that line to that one is one. Same thing. Just a different way to do it. Just pay attention to the arrow. Mm-hmm. Because the arrows are pointing out what line you care about. Only at the know. bottom. Yeah. Which one of those is better? Yeah. Which one's better, A or B? A is B. A is right. This is good. Why? This is bad. Why is that one right? Confusing. You need to change that one to do it from the side. That way people understand better. Well, that's trickier that way. Well, that's one straight up in the middle doesn't seem better to me. It seems cleaner, almost like that other one he was talking so about. So let's say I had a cylinder from the side or something like that. If I did it See, that, that's not very good. Okay, I guess that doesn't do it annotated. So I can space those out like that. Now I can see the difference between them, right? But I have to space them out really far. So if I made them only 10 apart, they're overlapping. But now if I offset them a little bit, you can even squeeze them in further. And now I can get them even closer together, right? Yeah. Uh, that would help if you had like 15 things. So you don't use as thing. much room. So that's you why know. you want them offset. So you don't and think it. about if I start adding tolerances to them. Yeah, which we'll about next week. Yeah. This text can easily become that long. <clears throat> and so you want to have the offset. And also if you have a lot of things, it's easier to think, okay, that's the top number, come over here, and then you look back and you're like, okay, now which one is it? Because if they're on a line, you can trace it up over, you know, forget what you're, you're looking at. So, but here, you're like, oh, that's on the top, and you look back to the top. Oh, that's the middle one, it's the middle. So it's easier to track back and forth than if they're all on a line also. Okay? So we don't mention hidden lines. This is why we do sections. We do sections so we don't have to do dimension hidden lines. If I wanted to keep these same dimensions on the same view, what would I do? What kind of section? Uh, well, it depends on what you're doing. If I want to keep this exactly like it is, but make it a section, what would I do? Make it a half section. Make a break out. I could do it as a half section if I had the other view also. But here, I can just do it broken out, right? Well, let's say it has the rest of the part on the end of here. After yeah. the break. So this is a round part. That's all I need. And so I could get away with not doing the whole the side view. <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. wait a second. Going going back to your thing, don't, don't duplicate dimension. Yeah. There would be no point putting those dimensions because you have to show that part anyway, don't you? 
Where? You have to show the hidden lines in somewhere else, don't you? You show the No, if I, did, if I turn that into a, into a section, I don't need to show this at all. Oh, okay. Or I could show this on, an, on another view, but not dimension it. But if I'm going to add a dimension, I want it to be a section. So you hatch it. Yeah. That's one of my pet peeves, is dimension hidden lines. Write this down. A lot of people do. I am strictly against it. <clears throat> so whenever you have a circle, it goes to the center. So AutoCAD it does it really easy. What should you use to dimension circles and arcs? There not. Either the radius or diameter oh, okay. dimension. Oh, yeah. Don't use a leader to dimension a circle. This one? The, the oh. hidden one that you just talked about. So did you want to just, so anytime we're going to take away those hidden lines in there, just reverse Yeah, we do a section it. just like we did a couple weeks ago. But do you want us to yeah. uh, hatch it? Yeah, that's, that's part of a section. That, that makes it a section. So it doesn't matter what hatch. Go yeah, back and watch the lecture from a couple weeks ago, okay. where we can talk about it. What right. did those 100 you had us do? <clears throat> but right here, use either radius or, or diameter dimensions. Don't use a leader or a multi-leader. The so multi-leader or leader don't point at the center of a circle. If you use the radius or di diameter dimension, it'll always point at the middle. It makes your life easier. <laughs> so if you turn that into me, and your dimension is like that, guess where you're getting on that? Just the outside. No, he'll whack you on your points. Yeah, because it's not. <laughs> it needs to point towards the center. Yeah. If you use the leader command, you're going to turn into something like that, probably. Or something like that. So, Which I will see instantly. And once I see that, guess what I'm doing to the rest of your drawing? Yeah. It'll get colorful. With a fine tooth comb. Uh, oh, so, so you're saying that they need to point at center. They need to point at the center. You know, you have a circle, a circular feature. <laughs> The dimension has to point towards the center of the circle. Leader line is going to point at the outside. Ah. Over here for leader, this one, yes, we use a leader for notes. For pointing at the edge, we use an arrow. For pointing at a surface, we use a dot. Is there any exceptions to the no. leaders? Like, say, if you're doing like a curved part, but you're not using the actual whole circle, you're just using that curve? It still needs to angle towards the center. And that same drawing that we did, but we didn't have it that way. Not on this one. Well, even other ones that we even even here, this line is going to point towards the real center. This this piece of the line that's cut touching the circle is pointing towards the real center, even if it's way down here. It, it always. If it wasn't, then it was wrong. Can I ask you something? And the person that did it probably did it with a leader instead of a cir with a, a circular dimension. Would, would you say on that, it, uh, an arrow is for an edge? Yeah, see right here, it's touching the edge. Even though over there you're, no, you're pointing here, to here the I'm center. Seeing, here I'm seeing the circle. So right. I can point at the center of the circle. And here I'm looking at the side of it. I'm not, I can't see, there's no left center left. here. Right. And the dot is for pointing at a, a center? A surface. surface. It's touching the surface. A surface. So okay. like if this is my, I was drawing this table. Yeah. If I was doing it from this side, It'd be an, you'd an see arrow. the top surface is an edge, right? And you'd draw it with an arrow. If I was doing the top view, right. I'd point here. This is the surface, so I'd use a dot. You'd do a dot. So remember, dot. everything's a surface or an edge. I didn't know dots existed. Yep. In your style.
Two. So you have to see that. Also, leaders, this is going to be a multi leader. They do not follow the same multi leaders, have their own dimension style. That is not the same as the dimension style for dimensions. So it could, here I've got it set so it's the same, but it could be different if you're doing your own drawing. It might not be set to annotative, it might not be the right, the same size between them. Um, so you want to make sure you, you check that. If you use the, the normal leader command, just the, if you type leader, then it uses <clears throat> the dimension style. But you lose some of the other options for multi balloons and stuff and all that stuff. So it's kind of which way you want to go. So the dots are solid and the cat the top, the arrows for any other kind. What was that? Surface. Yeah, arrows for most things, dots if it goes to a surface. What do you mean by radial? Radial that, was is that the break? Pointing at the circle. Radial when going to a circle. Oh, so radial means it's pointing towards the center. Okay. okay. So that's what I already talked about. <clears throat> so going on around, right? Yes, rounding. Good. Let's get some practice. So five thirty seconds. Point one five six two. Take it to two places. One. Point six. Five times thirty-two. Five for I mean, thirty seconds. Point one, six, yeah. one, point, one, and then we come out with one five six two. Uh -huh. That's the frac. The small equivalent. You just round into two places with that. Well, three thirty seconds. Oh nine three eight. Point zero nine. Yeah, point oh nine. Just kick right. It's on five. Eight eight. Point eight. Use. Eight eight. Right. Whoa, wait a second, though. Yeah, because that's five. Wow. We're going to two places. The two places? It up. Right, but I thought we wanted to keep to the quarters. I, I, I want two, two decimal places. Yeah, down in the box. No, it, we that's see the eight, seven, that five is changing that seven. Yeah, the, the five changes to an eight normally, but I thought we didn't want, if you're doing your dimensioning or your numbers, I thought you wanted to keep with 8.5 or 8.75. Two, five, no, you're you're on the right track, but you've got it the rule wrong. Okay, I, uh, that's uh, not no, unusual. No. Yeah, it's going to go to 8-8. Eight, eight. We don't, the rounding isn't as simple as drafting as it is in other things. So, so far it's just doing regular rounding like you do in math, right? Uh, yeah. Now, 1, 2, 5, what does that round to? 0.13. No, 1, 2. No. Why? No. Why? 2. No, no, okay. Or nothing. Yeah. Why? Is this regular math? No. No. Because what happens if you divide? So let's say. What the hell? Did you add? Does so this round out to the nearest number? If you add point, if you round that to point. The tolerance is. You don't want to make it too big. If you have it point one three, you divide that two by two. What do you get? Um, well, you 13. get six point five. Point six. Point zero six five. We take this and divide it by two. He's explaining oh. why it doesn't go up yeah. to the third one. Yeah, that. What is half of an eight? A fourth. A quarter. A sixteenth. Uh, right? right. Wow. Right. One sixteenth. That's half. What's the decimal for sixteen? Is oh six two five the same as oh six five? No. Yeah. Is what's half of point one two? Point six. Point six. Point six. Zero six. So is that closer to that than that is? Yes. Yeah. That's why we round the same distance though. Not if not with nope. because it's uh, six O add point two. Point You're arguing with engineers. It makes it makes it easier five. to keep track. Okay. Why wouldn't you just dimension as an eighth of an Because we use decimals. Or sixteenth of an eighth. Well, um, maybe mechanical parts you need to. most of the time. I know, like structural and architectural and stuff, they do fractions. Um, but in mechanical, 
most of the time we do just plain decimals. We, we don't we don't use fractions. We we, we like decimals because we can get more exact. With them. <coughs> we want to be exact when you just go to third decimal place. Yeah, and that's depending on what you're doing. Um, because uh, how many decimal places you show controls your tolerance. So remember on our cuddle block. About this, turn it decimal place. So that one decimal place, you have tolerance of uh, plus or minus 0.1. Two decimal places, 0 0.02, 3, 0 0.005. <clears throat> so you have to buy those decimal places. And we'll talk about tolerances more next week. <clears throat> so, whatever the last number, the number to the right of where you're rounding. So this is my my rounding cutoff, the number to the right of that is a 5, you stay to the even number. So if it's like a 6 or something, you would go up? That any other number, 6 and up, you go up, 4 and down, you go down, if it's 5, you go to the even. It just makes it easier. But if, if, if 5 goes to the even, whether it's up or down. Yep, if you have 5, you go, which one is even? So here, the 5, we turn it to the, make the even it number. An eight. So Which went up. Here we went down to the even number. Yeah. Uh, um, I know the genius is no math and I suck at it, so how would you multiply that to get that 0.1562? Five one five six two. Five what's five thirty two? One you type in five, five divided, divided by thirty two. Yeah. Hit math and then you get that? Okay. Hit math and no, I'm just, <laughs> I didn't want to know. No, it's just five math. divided by thirty two. <laughs> okay. That's five four. That's how you do fraction conversion. Just divide the fraction. Okay. And you should get to seven, know at seven, least seven, at least the eighths. You should you should know before you leave here and try to get a job what all the decimal equivalents are for the eighths. Preferably the eight. sixteenths too. Sixteenths. So three eighths, five eighths, seven eighths. You should know all those conversions. Okay. Maybe some of the sixteenths also, like three sixteenths and stuff, five sixteenths. Because it, those are ones that are used a lot. Like 3 eighths, 5 eighths, 7 eighths, used all the time. Do we need to know 4 eighths? You better know 4 eighths. Not unless you're in metric. Uh, yeah. 4 eighths is half. What is that? Uh, right? So you should know halves, quarters, eighths, some of the sixteenths at least. And then some of the, and then what a sixty fourth is, what a third second is, so that we can add it to them. So you need to. If you're, if you're having trouble with fractions, it's time to practice. You don't want to go through what I went through, starting work and not knowing fractions and having to learn it on the job. Where hmm. <coughs> you print out the yeah. sheets. Yeah. Get a decimal equivalent <laughs> chart. Put them up all over your Put it next to your bed and look at it every night before you go to bed. Or while you're watching TV. What or while you're working on your computer. <coughs> Just have it as your, de your background on your computer. Fraction? A decimal, decimal equivalent chart. I can look that up. <clears throat> you think I'm joking? No, the more you see it, the ba the more you're gonna get it. That's what you hear it once, you're gonna forget it real fast. You hear it a second time, you know, you're gonna remember it longer. Third time, longer. So, the more you see it, the more you're gonna remember it, even if you're not like studying it the whole time. <clears throat> so, when we have angles, we get a dimension with a distance and an angle, or two distances. Which one's right? They're both right. Depends, right? Depends on what's a point. lot of this is it depends. What what do we really care about? Do we care about the angle? Do we care about the distance? Yeah. And angle. It depends. Well, the, the, if you have distances, well, if you have still distance, the same you thing. don't need the angle. Question. Unless yeah, somebody yeah, wants the question. angle. Good question. We need all three. Yeah. The distance will still be the angle. It's either or. Yeah. Either these two or those two. Those are both right. Yeah. It just depends. Yeah. Yeah. It depends yeah. on where you're at. U.S., we use the one on the right. No. I mean, they're both right. Yeah, they both right. No. Depends on where you're. Do you care about the angle? All of them. Or do you care about the distance? That's how you decide. So, unless you know have the part. So, like, if this was going to go into something that had. Something else was measured at 45 degrees. I care about the angle here. But if this was going to go into something that had a height here 
in a specific depth here that was real tight tolerance. And that's what I care about, that I would use the distances. So it's all about what it's going with. And so like I said earlier, that's the hardest part about school classes is you don't know what it's going with. So you just have to kind of decide. <clears throat> so what's that? The location matters as well, right? 48.5 degrees. Right, depending where the park's going. What do you mean, what is it? What does that, what does that say? Read that number to me. 48.5 degrees. 48.5 degrees. degrees. What does that number say? 26 degrees, 30 feet. No. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Ah, that's right. What does that mean? What is 30 minutes? It's part of a... It's... 30 minutes is uh, half, a half a degree. 30th of a degree. Because it's 60 minutes in an, in a, it's, uh, in an hour. It's old school? Oh my God. What did you say, September? It's old yep. school and no So 30 minutes work. is half a degree. Because there's 60, to, 60 minutes in a degree. So think of clock. Every time the minute hand goes around, wow. the hour hand moves one degree. Why didn't we just use this? Yeah, who just said it? Depends on what you're doing. If you're doing uh, civil or uh, structural, sometimes they'll do they minutes. Minute. Like that? Mechanical, we usually like do it. decimals. Depends on what you're doing. Civil, they only use degrees yeah. of minutes. They don't even do it this way. They do it with a, a direction and a bearing. I have read that. So how did, would you do the math for that? Do you mean, take math A because it's or math B. That was math A right now. 60 degrees, not 80, but we'll say 60 minutes equals 1 degree. And then there's 60 seconds in 1 minute. So just divide 30 into 126? No. That would be 126, 2 No, no, they're separate. 30 minutes, so that could be also read as 126.5 degrees. Oh, okay. Just half. 30 just divided half. by 60 is 0.5. Yeah, just think well, about half, half. So depending on how they do it. <clears throat> so drawing the, the dimension, it's AutoCAD pretty much takes care of it for you. But you just pick the two lines, puts it in. Okay, well, I think we're almost to a break the point. You guys need to go break? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Take a break. We break. We jelly.